Hey, this is Kirk Short here with the Wichita Home Team at Keller Williams Signature Partners. And today I'm out at Eldersley Farms, and this is in the Sunnydale community near Valley Center, Kansas. And I'm gonna go and introduce you to an amazing person. Her name is Becky Elder, and she is the reason that this is here. And let's just go and talk with her. So guys, this is Becky Elder, and I'm gonna let her explain to me what Eldersley Farm is and frankly, why it's here. Well, welcome. It's a cold day and uh, I've got on my best coat. It keeps me warm all the time, but it, uh, it makes it apparent that Eldersley Farm is a working farm. We also happen to be a restaurant and a creamery and a woodworking shop and a horse barn and a goat farm. But basically this place works. It just works. The original house was built around uh, 1979. Philip and I acquired it in 1982. We moved two little boys into a dump. <laughs> I wanted to live in Wichita next to my mother. I did not want to be out here. But my husband said, be patient, we'll mow. <laughs> it will look better. So 35 years later, or however long I've been here, it does look a lot better. But the original house was very small. It, was, uh, it had been on the market for two years with a Prudential Insurance Company and people had vandalized it and lived in it. There were animal remains in the basement. There were fires in the fireplace and one of them on the wood floor. This place was in bad shape, but we got it at the right price and we lived with it. And now it's a beautiful place. And now it is an exceptionally beautiful place, thanks to a lot of people who contributed their part, but the original intent of the home was a home. <laughs> The original, the original house was, you're in the garage right now, and we'll just kind of keep walking this direction. All of this is remodeled to accommodate, just take a peek in here, a restaurant full of tables and chairs that were made in the wood shop, which uh, we'll, we'll go that direction eventually. But everything that you see right now that's wooden was done by my husband or George uh, as we lived in the house. I am going to just basically brush through a part of the house that could take us five hours to talk about. This is the portrait room. And in the portrait room are the ancestors. And Philip was from Tennessee, and I was from Wichita forever and ever and ever. I tricked him, and I told him that you could grow trees in Kansas, and he believed me because he loved me so much, and he came. And we grew trees, but these were the people in this gallery that inspired us to the agrarian life uh, out here on the farm. There's uh, my grandparents, and his mother and father are basically the portraits in the gallery here. Nice. Mm, very nice. There, there is now a commercial kitchen, of course, but it used to be what is called a two-step kitchen. And every morning the kids would line up, there were eight children, and they would line up at the counter and each one of them would get a pancake. That was the routine. That was about as much restauranterism as I uh, interjected into the house. But in this room, you can see, uh, as you get perspective, this was the gathering place. It was the living room. It was, we called it the Gillespie edition because it took longer to build this than for us to have our last baby, James Gillespie. <laughs> But now it is really the showpiece of the restaurant. 
Uh, all the wood again was done by George. All the tables were built out in the wood shop. And George and his wife Catherine have built quite a reputation around fine dining, hospitality, uh, and this is the place they do it. The house uh, has a second story, and that second story was uh, uh, bedroom space exclusively when the kids were all growing up. And uh, now it's office space, and hopefully later on they might get around to some kind of a B and B environment in this in this house. But it morphed; the house morphed. Uh, this largest addition uh, was done uh, very deliberately to prepare the house for not just family living, but for gathering people. Before it was a restaurant, we actually held church in here for three years. We held umpteen uh, New Year's Eve parties, harvest parties. It was a neighborhood central, and as the children were growing up, uh, everybody knew how to come to Eldersley, and that's what we wanted Eldersley to be, was a place to gather. The name itself, I'll just mention, means the place where the elders lie, Eldersley, and that means the place where they've come to stay so long that they die here and they're buried. It's an old Scottish term. Oh. If you move around through uh, the clans and you hear that word, Elders Lee, or uh, anywhere like Burg or Burrow or, or uh, in other uh, languages, you know, a small town, Ton, T-O-N, Lie, L-I-E, means the place you've been so long you stayed forever. I like that. It's beautiful. I like that. This is the full uh, process. We're gonna start down here. I don't know if they're in. No, they're not in Aww. yet. We can find them, but this is the goat barn. So do they free range? Uh, yes, they do. That's a huge part of what the, the operation represents. There is a, a very strong renaissance going, in, uh, going on in uh, farming and ranching and it's regenerative practices. Mm -hmm. They differ a great deal from some of the industrial practices that have right. been the norm. And so it, it has to do with full use of the land, full use of the animal, full use of the natural grasses that are here right. in uh, rotational grazing. But they'll go up the chute uh, six at a time. Okay. And then you, if you can poke into the windows here, here's the milking parlor. Okay. It, it's going to get uh, renovated because production is going to go up in February. We're going to go from a herd of about 30 milkers to almost 60. Oh, man. You saw the loafing shed. You right. saw the milking parlor. And here's the cheese processing uh, that is making, I think, almost uh, seven or eight different kinds of cheese now. Really? And he's always experimenting with new things. There is also in this place something I can share with you that you, from which you will never recover. It is called <laughs> goat gelato. Goat gelato. Yes, I think I'm getting it right. When we come back in here and we have a little leisure, I'll put yep. one in your hand and even though it's a freezing cold day, you oh, will come you will come back for more. <laughs> so this is the retail shop and during the summer when the berries are in, yeah. there have been up to 7,000 people out here. Oh, we had 10,000 pounds of berries about 3 summers ago and as every farmer knows, Every year is your last stand. You have to take what nature gives you. Yep. That limiting factor is the creative impetus. It's the, it's the drive to survive. 
So uh, when the berries are in, people are here picking them. They're in here buying cheese and uh, gelato. Yes, just a, a hive. Right now you're in this beautifully dormant period. And again, all the woodworking is George. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's very, uh, it's just very integrated. That I love a lot too. So where do you house and age your cheeses? Right in here. In the processing room, there's two large lockers and uh, they're full of cheeses that range from like six weeks yeah. to now over a year and a half. Really? The big moment is that it's cultured. It's, right. it's, it's allowed to speak for itself. Correct. And that I love about yeah. what, what the farm, the farm speaks for itself. It's, yeah. the, it's the relationship of man, land, animal. It's the people in a place. And that will take us, uh, that thought will take us from this very specific place, Eldersley, into Sunnydale, which has the historic, it has the story of man, land, and animal uh, at its core and how it has never changed. And this is just the modern iteration of that relationship man, land, and animal. Well, I, I love the fact that coming out here, it's just, you know, it, it takes, it takes you, takes you back, whether it's, whether it's Sunnydale and all that, it takes you back to the way, you know, people used to do things. Um, the woodworking shop used to have Taylor that worked here, and that's how I got introduced to this place. Yeah. And, you know, watching him sit there and work on stuff with dowels and dub joints and all of that, not using screws and nails to make beautiful pieces of furniture effectively. And, and to see that coming from a younger generation. Right. And you're preserving that. I'm looking at the young lady that's you know in here working on, on uh, the cheeses and, and doing all that stuff. This is not, this is not an old person. This is, this is your elders mm -hmm. teaching the new generation the way things have been done in the past and how they can be done in the future. It's a succession. It, succession is happening here because it has to. Time tells us a story that we have to listen to. Yeah. Just like the land tells us a story we have to listen to. Well, and it's also a preservation of how things were done and that they can still be done that way. Not everything has to be fast paced. No. This, this is on the internet, right? And everything is just instantaneous in here and this is respecting the process. Yeah, and I like to think that worlds, different worlds have to live together. So the world of the internet, the world of the industrial has to live with the world of the agrarian, the land. I grew up as La Box Company. Yep. I'm an industrialist daughter, an yep. industrialist wife, an industrialist sister. I know what it takes to to make 20,000 boxes in an hour. Yep. And I also know how much time it takes for the goat milk to culture over time and yep. bring forward this slow dance of flavor and presentation in a, in a culinary or a gastronomic way. Yep. It's, just, it's, it's a beautiful balance. I Again. love it. Yeah. I love it. I Let's love keep it. looking. Here we go to the Sunnydale building.